This is an application uh, for permission to appeal against the, a decision of the uh, Court of Appeal uh, refusing uh, the uh, applicant a, 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 an interlocutory injunction effectively restraining uh, the uh, respondents and in particular uh, the uh, seventh uh, 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 and sixth and fifth respondents or from fourth to seventh respondents or some of them from dredging. Um, I do not propose to go into the details, uh, which are factual details and procedural background, because very unusually this is an extemporary judgment of the court, or, or, or extemporary um, advice technically, uh, which the board will be uh, uh, humbly tendering uh, to Her Majesty, although we are asked to grant interlocutor relief. Um, as I say, the history is reasonably uh, clear. Uh, and um, will be known to the parties and uh, to any court below that has to consider uh, our decision. Uh, the uh, applicant uh, essentially uh, arrests uh, its case uh, on uh, the argument that the dredging uh, being carried out uh, by the respondents, as I will call them, although they are actually interested parties, uh, is contrary uh, to the uh, conservation and protection of the physical landscape of the Bahamas uh, uh, Act, uh, Chapter 260. Uh, the first issue which is raised is whether, in fact, uh, as uh, the respondents contend uh, the, uh, through, through Mr. Uh, Peter Knox, a Queen's Counsel, uh, the uh, activity falls within the ambit of the Act, the 1997 Act at all. Uh, this turns on the meaning of, quote, excavation, unquote, uh, which is given a meaning in section two and is then said to include uh, certain specific activities uh, also in section two. Uh, it is not a point which we uh, should or need to decide uh, d conclusively in, in these proceedings. Uh, but we see, while well, we see considerable force in Mr. Knox's contention uh, that uh, dredging, as carried on in this case, uh, would not be within the first uh, definition of excavation because it is not into the ground, uh, although uh, the bottom of the sea uh, may be within the concept of the ground. Uh, we consider he has considerable difficulties in his argument that it, in this case, does not fall uh, within the second definition of excavation, uh, paragraph C2, and conceivably, uh, but less uh, likely, paragraph C4. Uh, again, it's not necessary to decide it, but it strikes us uh, that uh, unless the second inclusive definition of excavation uh, is not intended uh, to be, uh, to take the definition, the first definition further, uh, it is simply an unnecessary provision. Furthermore, it's unlikely that some of its terms, particularly C3 uh, uh, would, uh, and possibly C4, would have much meaning uh, if uh, it did not take the defi first definition of excavation further. So we think there is a, a strong case uh, for the applicant on that. Uh, it's important to emphasize at this stage that in that connection we differ from the majority of the Court of Appeal who took a different view although one member of the Court of Appeal, uh, Justice of Appeal Conte, uh, took the same view uh, uh, as we do. If, as we conclude, it is at least arguable and strongly arguable uh, that the 1997 Act applies, uh, Mr Knox contends uh, that valid consent uh, was in fact given under that Act uh, on the uh, 23rd of January uh, 2014, but that was consent given by the acting director of the Department of Lands and Surveyors, as he himself accepts effectively as the landowner, uh, and uh, it, in, in that connection, therefore, uh, it, it seems to us uh, that uh, it was not a valid uh, permit under the 1997 Act. It was given by the wrong person, namely not the director of the, the DPP, uh, and uh, it, it was not given in the belief that the 1997 Act applied. Uh, their matters stood uh, uh, until this morning, because this morning, uh, following a, a short hearing yesterday, 
uh, in front of a slightly differently constituted board, uh, Lord Mance instead of Lord Clark, uh, when this uh, application was first raised, uh, there was no permit under the 1997 Act. But overnight, uh, a permit dated 22nd May 2014 was produced. Uh, it is subject to certain conditions, compliance with documents set out in or uh, in or in annexes appended to letters of 20th, 23rd of January and 2nd and 15th May uh, 2014, uh, and compliance with certain um, provisions of the uh, uh, 1997 Act. On the face of it, if it, this is a valid permit, that is the end of, of, of this application. And while it may be a, a valid permit, uh, we are bound to say at this stage uh, that uh, there are reasons for concern over it. Uh, in particular, it's clear that a permit of, of this nature uh, sh should, an application for a permit of this nature uh, should be seriously considered uh, by the DPP. Such a proposition uh, goes, one would have thought, without saying. And one notes uh, that before such an application uh, can be granted, uh, it would appear from Section 8 of the 1997 Act uh, that the DPP uh, should at least uh, consider uh, whether he should allow any interested person to object, uh, and if he does, he should take into account their objections. Uh, there is evidence to suggest that this um, dredging and the, act, the, the eventual project with which it is connected uh, is very controversial and has been the subject of a not entirely favourable, I think, uh, miss. Uh, Jordan, who appears for the applicants, would say that that is putting it far too low, not entirely favourable uh, environmental impact assessment, and has uh, various other uh, criticisms from other people. In those circumstances, uh, given the very, very last minute nature of, of this uh, permit, uh, we, we consider that there must be a question mark over it, uh, and as to whether it is valid. In those circumstances, uh, it, it seems to us that there is an arguable case, both for the applicant saying that a strong case for saying that there's no, there is a need for permit, and a reasonable case for saying that the permit that's been produced at the last minute is not valid. Uh, and there is a reasonable case for arguing that there is, a, in favour of the respondents, that there is a permit. Uh, what has not been gone into is the extent, if any, to which there has been compliance with the requirements uh, set out in the letters to which I've referred uh, uh, and which uh, has to be, have to be complied with uh, under the terms of the permit. It, it may well be that the effect of those conditions is that uh, the uh, dredging should not be taking place because they have not been complied with. But as Mr Knox very fairly says, that's not something he's had an opportunity to deal with. But on the other hand, the reason he hasn't had an opportunity to deal with it is because this permission, which, this permit, which was no doubt uh, obtained at uh, his client's instigation, um, uh, was uh, uh, obtained at the last minute. In those circumstances, it seems to us we are faced with a uh, balance of balancing of, of, of injustice or convenience uh, argument. Uh, we think it is finely balanced in the sense that uh, the respondents are not in a position to offer any cross undertaking in damages. Uh, and uh, given that the applicant. The, 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 the applicants are not in a position to offer any cross undertaking in damages, and the respondents appear liable to uh, a substantial loss every day under the dredging contract, uh, over $150,000, we were told, a day. Uh, furthermore, uh, it can be said in favour of the uh, respondents. Uh, that they did apply, it would appear, although the evidence is somewhat scanty, uh, for uh, a permit under section, uh, uh, under the 1997 Act, uh, and we were told, uh, they were told by the uh, Bahamian authorities that it was not needed. And therefore, it's, they can say it's not their fault they didn't get one till the last minute. Uh, furthermore, um, the uh, application for judicial review on which this whole uh, uh, application uh, for an interlocutory injunction is based, uh, was 
uh, granting, well, 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 the moment is effectively stayed because it is subject to an order for security for costs which the applicants are unable to meet. Uh, that application, uh, they have appealed that order for security and although it's not open to them to challenge the principle of a security for costs, uh, they are permitted and are currently arguing against the relatively high figure, as they see it, that's been ordered. Uh, that matter is part heard before the Court of Appeal and we were told is due uh, to be uh, resumed before the Court of Appeal on the 4th of June. In favour of the uh, applicants, in favour of granting the interlocutory injunction, is the fact uh, that uh, if it's not granted, uh, uh, that will uh, undermine uh, the uh, interlocutory, uh, that will undermine the application for judicial review. Uh, furthermore, they are not, as it were, um, unconnected with the uh, premises, uh, with, 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 with the proposal. They represent uh, groups and individuals who live uh, or carry on business on premises which are very near and will be affected by, and indeed, as I understand it, in many cases are being adversely affected by uh, the development. Uh, furthermore, uh, to a significant extent, the respondents can be said to have uh, entered into the dredging contract with their eyes open because the uh, proceedings had already, uh, the, the, the judicial review proceedings had already been brought and they had offered uh, a clear undertaking which they repeated to the Court of Appeal uh, that uh, uh, they would not uh, do, start the dredging uh, uh, until they had all the permissions needed. Uh, that was uh, an offer they proposed, to, they made, it was an undertaking they gave, and uh, it has to be said, as a commercial organisation, uh, they undertook it at their own risk. Uh, I, 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 as I've indicated, we, we have found this a, a difficult case. Uh, we have, um, of course, borne in mind the view the Court of Appeal took, and uh, were it not for the important fact that they clearly had a different view, the majority had a different view as to the effect of the 1997 Act, uh, it would not have been important, I suspect, for us to consider interfering with that decision. As it is, because of our concern over this very last minute permit, uh, we think the right order to make is to grant the injunction, but to do so on terms which enables uh, the respondents uh, to apply to discharge the injunction on very short notice and very quickly, uh, if and when they are able to establish uh, that, they are, uh, that, that they are able to rely on the permit uh, granted on 22nd May 2014. They may choose to wait to do this uh, uh, and apply to the Court of Appeal on the 4th of June or uh, any time thereafter the Court of Appeal uh, directs or think is, thinks is appropriate or they may be in a position to do that earlier, in which case, subject to what Council have to say, we would have thought the right thing would be for them to apply uh, to the Supreme Court. Not us. But not uh, to us. Um, we are anxious not to um, stand in the way of the uh, Supreme Court's uh, power to grant or refuse or discharge any injunction. We are equally anxious not to stand in the way of the Court of Appeal. We've had to consider this matter on short notice they are the primary courts uh, carrying out the function of granting and refusing and discharging injunctions. Uh, and therefore, uh, what we have to say on the merits uh, of the case uh, should be uh, not taken as, as written in stone, bearing in mind the very short time the parties have had uh, to prepare this appeal for this appeal and the time uh, that we have had to absorb the facts. Uh, we do say that we consider uh, that the uh, effect of the act appears to be on the arguments we've heard, as we've indicated, and we do say that while the arguments are very finely balanced, uh, we feel that the best way of disposing of this, the fairest way, is to grant an injunction, but to accord the respondents uh, the opportunity at short notice um, of uh, establishing that the permit is one that they can rely on, that was given the necessary consideration by the DPP, and if it is a relevant uh, dispute, uh, that they have complied with the conditions uh, set out in the permit by reference to the letters, which, such as they have to comply with before they dredge. On that basis, we propose the Board will uh, humbly tender to Her Majesty the advice that permission to appeal uh, should be granted, uh, that the uh, injunction 
uh, should be uh, granted on the basis we have indicated, uh, and we'll hear counsel on any further elucidation that's needed, clarification that's needed, or any other matter which follows. Uh, my Lord, I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, I'm subject to my learned friend having issues about clarification. We would like to apply for our costs of uh, I'd have the thought The normal thing in this sort of case is for costs to be determined in due course by the court below, I'd have thought. Um, I, I, this has been done in a great hurry. I, I would be uncomfortable about allocating costs in relation to this. Especially since any order for, which might be made in your favour for costs is not going to be uh, effectively offset by uh, orders which they may obtain. Yes. For, for a party who at the moment is uh, appealing uh, a, a failure to give the security order for their costs, it may well, be it, a little it, rich. For it's you not necessarily to be seeking case. your cost, looking at justice in the ground. Any order for cost we've made would be stayed anyway, because it would be totally unfair to require cost to be paid to you when, in due course, you may owe more to the other side. I appreciate the stayed point, but uh, on Lord, Lord Tilson's point, uh, it's not necessarily the case that my clients wouldn't be able to honour a cost order. It's simply that they wouldn't be able to offer an undertaking damages of the order suggested here. Right. Um, just one point on my, on my cost application, then I'll sit down. Um, and that is that had this matter been heard yesterday, um, and as I said yesterday, we, get, we did give proper note, well, not proper notice, but my, uh, those instructing learned friends knew in the Bahamas at, at half nine uh, on the morning of, of Wednesday, and they had the papers. So had they instructed people on time and turned up yesterday able to deal with it, we would have, uh, perhaps resulted in a slightly different order which may have entitled us to our costs. So we've been prejudiced in terms of costs by what happened overnight in terms of this, this new permit. I'm not impressed with that. No. Okay, thank you very much. We don't need to trouble you on costs if you're content with the costs order we've indicated. Yes. The question of costs will be dealt with below. Um, right, uh, we don't propose to include in the order unless either of you want it an indication as to um, the basis on which an application can be made to discharge. We will simply record that the injunction is granted until the 4th June or such further time as the Court of Appeal decides with liberty to apply in the meantime uh, to the Supreme Court. And on the basis that when it comes up in the 4th of June, the Court of Appeal can extend the injunction, discharge it or vary it. But in the meantime, Mr. Knox, we think you should have the opportunity to go to the Supreme Court to discharge it on, on the limited basis of, of what we've said. But if you can establish that the permit was, was properly considered and that the conditions insofar as they are important have been complied with. But that will be in the judgment. Oh, Lord, yes. I, can I just take this Of course you can. Well, I was only, I, I, the question I was asked is, would there be any circumstances in which we could come back to you rather than to go to the Supreme Court's discharge? Well, the only problem is a practical one. Um, a, in principle, we, but, and, and B, next week, we're away. Yes. But, um, well, put it this way, I will be in the country. I don't know about my lords. I suspect that if anything gets sent to me, I will say it should go to the Court of Appeal. But if there is something, because this is very fluid, I don't want to shut you out from doing that. But I don't want to encourage you. No, I think but I... But if, if anything sent to us, sent to the court, and it will get sent to me and I'll look at it. Yes. And also, the, the only point would be, of course, there may be some very simple point which we well, haven't been aware of. And Exactly. It, it, I, I think and that's would... why, in fairness, um, I, 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 it, both, both parties have through no fault of their own, it's just the nature of litigation <coughs> under time pressure. I wouldn't want to shut you out, but equally, I wouldn't propose to make any order or consider making any order without the applicant being told. So if you make a, a, an application to uh, the court or make a request to the court, uh, I, I would say that it should be, uh, and I'm sure it would have been, uh, at the same time copied to the applicant. Yes, of course. But I, would, I, would, I think it's unfair to say I wouldn't consider it. I'm much obliged, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all very much.